everyone, Pinchy House Garage here today, and I'm here with actually Chris from Kerma TDI. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Good, good. Um, and today, we're what are we doing? We're gonna change out some injectors, some rebuild injectors that are calibrated uh, through Kerma TDI uh, using Bosio Fratelli nozzles that we sell. Best nozzles in the world for uh, ALH and VE type uh, TDIs, like uh, including Mark III, One Z, AHU. So we're gonna put some bigger nozzles in today. I think we got you seven six fours. Um, so those are worth 50 extra torque to the wheel. So they're gonna basically re uh, They're gonna give you back the power that you lost from the old, old tired nozzles and add another roughly 50 torque to the wheel So this thing should be s roughly at like uh, 205 torque of the wheel give or take so mm -hmm. um, First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove we've already kind of popped this up because it was easy But basically usually these are underneath the hard lines. So this is your glow plug harness we popped it off. They pop off just like spark plug wires, basically. So you just pop, 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 pop. Fish this out this way. Swing it out of the way. Good to go. It's done. Um, next thing I like to do normally is uh, take a ratchet and a decent extension and a 13 millimeter socket. And we're going to loosen these hold down blocks. Okay, just get those cracked. Get all those done, and then you fish this one in here. Okay, and then I just finish these up by hand basically. And I don't know if Al wants to edit part of this out just because I'm it's gonna take a second, but it's all right. It's all, all right. right. Okay, now we're at the point where we can pull the blocks out one at a time, and I just pull them out with the each bolt and set them up here on the rain tray. Get those out of the way. You might want a set of these long needle nose pliers just for something like that, in case you drop one down here. <laughs> yes, sir, that is a common thing. Anyway, we'll get that other one later, and we'll get this one out because it is a little tricky to get these out just. With everything in the way. Okay, we'll get that other block later. Uh, once we do that, we take our 17 millimeter open end wrench and we crack these lines here at the injectors. Now, sometimes they are a little tight. Now, that one came loose pretty easy. Well, they've all been removed, by the way. Huh? Okay, good. All right. I've cracked them loose just recently. And you don't need to tighten these, just a side note. You don't need to tighten these real tight. It's like snug and then like another barely sixteenth of a turn because they are compression fittings. So you don't want to really wrench on them hard and you want to be kind of careful. Uh. <laughs> Sometimes you I usually just put them on good and tight. That's it. Good and tight. You know. Sometimes you get a stuck one. I don't like doing this because it bends the line. And you gotta be careful with those compression fittings. Here, I'm gonna put a block back in just to help out here. Keep it from spinning? Yeah, I should have cracked them loose before. I have to admit it's been a minute, but I've done plenty of these. There we go. So okay, now we've got all the lines pretty much cracked up here on tops of the injectors and loose. So we'll pretty much get those completely unthreaded. Explain why we don't break loose the... So we did crack the one, the fittings here at the, at the pump, but just cracked it and then just hand finger tightened it back so that you don't, because when they start dripping, then you start introducing air back uh, up into the pump. And then like Al experienced, Last week, you have to go get a Mighty Vac and take this line off the pump and purge it of all the air out of it so you can get it started. So you don't want to airlock any of the lines or the pump because then it won't start. So anyway, we got all these undone. So those are nice and loose and off. And then these come back in pairs. So then we go back. And if you notice, you just for right now, you just initially you just do that one. And you get down here, 
and you undo that one. And I already had them cracked, as I explained. So you just loosen them a little bit, and then you pull these back ever so gently and get them out of the way. And then you retighten these fittings at the pump. And they're going to kind of want to almost walk back towards the injectors, but as long as you got some clearance to pull those injectors pretty much straight up out of the head, you're good. And I've, see, I've already got fuel dripping here, so i got to hurry up and get these lines tightened back up. Just so that, and the idea is to get these lines up out of the way and as vertical as possible. So we've got the first pair out of the way, then got those done, and then we do this one. We got that one done. And we get, uh, I gotta grab it with a wrench sometimes. Because when you change the angle of the line, it tightens up the adjuster, I mean the, uh, Tightens up the fitting a little bit, binds the fitting, and then we'll just tighten these up as such. Sorry, I know this is tedious, and everybody watching is going to want to go crack a beer real quick. <laughs> and you want to tighten this one down. If you can finger tight it, go for it. There we go. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. There we go. And then just give it a slight snug. Again, so you're not dripping fuel and introducing air up into the pump as such. And just snug. You don't have to crank on these or wrench on them real hard. Okay. Now we got those out of the way. Then, basically the next thing is to just, uh, uh, we really want to get down to this number three injector wire. And if you see down here, it fits in a little bracket. And it's really just kind of loose in there. So it's not a big deal, but you just got to kind of wiggle it sometimes. And sometimes they're a real booger to get out, but... And then as you can see, we got the little plug that goes to the number three injector. We got that out of the bracket. And then what you do is you... I don't know if you can see this, but there's little clips on the side. And you just pinch those clips in. And separate the two. And separate the two. Obviously male from female. Sometimes these are kind of a pain to do too. Be careful, it's 2020, they don't know what the, uh, <laughs> they don't know what the, uh, what's it called? Um, they don't know what they are, so just, yeah. just, uh, just make sure you just unplug there. the, 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 so the, now, the sensors. Basically you want the plug <laughs> undone so that you can pull the injectors out and it's free from the harness basically, because it plugs right into the harness here. This happens to be a, a 96 through 02 style, which is, as you can see, rectangular. If it was uh, an 03, a true 03, it's kind of more this size, but it's black, and it would be a, what we call a D-plug, where it's got two corners and then it's round on the other mm -hmm. side, and it's actually about that big. It's a little bit bigger, but that's the late style, and there's not a whole lot of those 03s out there. Then what we do, since we got all the hold down blocks out, then we try to, if we can, wiggle any of these injectors out, and it doesn't look like any of them really want to move. <laughs> so then we grab our slight hammer puller. Ah, there we go. And we just screw that on ever so lightly. We get it all the way down so you don't strip threads. And just finger tight is fine. And then we pop just like that. And they pop right out. Go. All right, so we took the slide hammer and we popped each one of these out. Normally you can get like at least one or two of these out by hand, but they were stuck. Uh, 280,000 miles, they get pretty carboned up. So we got the slide hammer puller. You screw it onto the end of the injector, pop these up, and, and they pretty much just come out pretty easily. I, they're not bad once you, if you have a slide hammer. Don't forget your slide hammer puller. And if you need one, we have them. Um, brand new, they're about 42 bucks. We're not really allowed to rent them. Um, we used to offer it with a hot swap program, but we don't anymore. But, you know, who doesn't need a slide hammer puller for their TDI, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we got all these loose. And generally, I just pull these out as a set once they're loose. I don't even bother to undo the lines because it's just, they're all going to come out anyway. Um, and then we undo this last return line to the pump and feed that through there. And then I just take all these and pull them up. 
and voila naked alh so that's what your injectors look like that number three injector is important that's the expensive one when you do a hot swap program through us that uh, of your 600 dollars core deposit that one injector is worth 450 bucks these are 50 dollars a piece these are dummy injectors as we call them because they don't go in any particular order it's only that number three injector with the uh, wire one thing you want to do there's this brass fitting eventually though when you before you send them back take this off we're going to take that and transfer it to the new set and then on the number one injector you notice there gets no return line it has this little nipple or whatever for the uh, last fitting and don't forget to change that over because otherwise you get fuel just spurting out of that and you lose free fuel pressure and you lose good mileage so for now we'll just take these and throw these out of the way and then we're going to need to do some transferring over so um al probably might want to um <laughs> as you can see we're switching out fuel lines and main one important thing is this brass t right here on the number three injector this needs to come off because we don't normally send a brass t on the rebuild set so i've already got this cracked it's a small, very small banjo bolt. Uh, I believe it's a ten, it's a ten millimeter, and it's got a couple of brass washers on it, real small. And you got to be careful so you don't drop them. There's one there, and there's one inside between the the bolt here and the and the uh, T. And then we just reuse them, and just go ahead and screw that back on. And then again, tight as tight, too tight as two pieces, as they say. And basically, I just use a real small ratchet so that I don't over tighten. And you want to kind of put it on cockeyed so that you can um, torque it enough. And then as you tighten, it'll kind of straighten out. That's probably just a little too much. So I get I get it about right, probably about right there. And then as you tighten, it'll straighten out. And it really doesn't have to be that straight. And that's that's it, just about that. It should not leak. If it leaks a little bit, once you got this back in the car, you can take a 10 millimeter wrench and just give it an ever so slight torque on it. And now we're gonna go ahead and change all these lines over to the new lines over to the new injectors. And in a minute here, we'll get back to you when we got them back in the head, sitting in the head. So we've got our set of rebuild injectors all complete now with the lines. This plug, don't forget to take that off your old set. And again, most importantly, well, just as important, don't forget this brass uh, T off the old set either. And then start out with all fresh lines, which we send you, and new copper crush rings. And as I mentioned to Al a minute ago, do not forget to remove either out of the head or off the old injectors, these copper crush rings, because if you double stack them, the car is going to run really funny, have poor compression in that cylinder, and it'll just, it'll sound horrible. It'll sound like it's coming apart. So, so what, what do we do before we do all this stuff? What do we um, do in the head? So we went through, and if you can put my, if you can see in our injector holes, we've got them nice and clean and shiny, as good as possible. We try to get as much debris and what out of there as possible, because you don't really want any grains of sand so we got we've used all the q-tips no I'm kidding uh we probably used about 20 q-tips to getting those clean you're gonna have to spend some time it's a good 20 minutes if they're really bad 30 minutes um cleaning those out with q-tips and i generally as a rule use a set of these they're nice and you can clamp down the q-tip in here you know as as such and hold it and then get it down in there and then basically just take carb cleaner or brake cleaner or simple green or something like that and just go down in there and swab out those little holes and again make sure that the copper crush rings are out of the head most importantly so that you do not double stack them double stacking is bad um, after that we're going to drop in the new crush rings which we have nice and pretty and i generally take a pair of these needle long needle nose pliers and i get right down in there because what you're trying to do, there's still debris on the walls of the cylinder, uh, inside the cylinder head right here in the injector seats. And I just go through and I gently place them all in. And then, uh, oh, thank you, Mr. Al. Um, and then we just go ahead and, you know, lightly uh, introduce the new injector and the nice brand new clean injector tip or nozzle tip 
down in there and try and knock off as little debris off those injector seat walls as possible because you don't want that stuff down in the cylinder because then you're blowing it through your turbo and when you do that you're introducing contamination into your turbo and that's a bad thing nobody likes contamination in their turbo so we're dropping all these down in here and the next thing is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop these in as as a set if you got a buddy this is easy to do otherwise if you're by yourself don't put the lines on drop them in one at a time and take your time and then you know so Al and I are gonna all right now we've got our whole block we got the injectors in we got them seated we got the hold down blocks in um, I did do a little bit of anti-seize on my bolts just so they don't uh, seize up in the head there and basically I just wanted to show you this washer is concaved and so you want to make sure that that concave is outward towards the head then we just drop that in and again I just do these by hand at first or by extension and socket as it were so I can reach down in there and then basically these get torqued down to I go I start with 18 to 20 foot pounds and then if I have to you can go back and torque them at like 22 and that's about it we don't like to go any more than that they should crush the washer just fine it should get a nice seal in there if you don't it's because you left grime and dirt and debris down in that injector seat and the uh, copper washer didn't seat correctly and you'll know because you'll get a tick you'll get a compression tick and a, a, it it's basically a compression leak and it'll make poor power so you got to really take it back out and clean it drop it back in there and you can actually take that washer and just flip it over and recrush it again so not a big deal uh, we're gonna go ahead and torque these down properly and then introduce the lines back onto the injectors and we'll be right back with you so now we got the injectors back in we got the hold down blocks torqued down to roughly about 20 foot pounds um, they they crushed it, it felt nice so I just I had 20 pounds and I left it we're gonna we're gonna find out once we get it running if we've got a tick or not um, we got the lines back down and seated back on the injectors but it, as I can so you can see right here we've left them only like one or two threads on loose so that you got just a hair of play in the in the line but down here at the pump we've got them torqued down and basically it's just snug and then literally just a hair more because these are compression fittings you don't want to strip these they're soft um, and they basically seal on their own so that's the whole point of a compression uh, fitting same with these on top these are these nuts here are soft also so they're kind of a compression fitting um, anyway we leave these loose up here because Al in just a second here is going to get in the car and we're going to crank these over to bleed them out now hopefully when we were we were trying to get the lines down on the injectors as soon as possible because you got to loosen these fittings down here on the pump considerably to get them to move and to be able to finagle them down back onto the injectors then we went ahead and tightened these torqued them by hand um, by feel I should say um, that way we don't lose fuel out of these fittings and introduce air into the pump because then you've got to take like a mighty vac or something like that and pull this line off put the mighty vac here and then you got to purge the air out of the pump so far I've had really good luck with all the injectors I've ever done I've never had to purge the pump Al had to do it not too long ago and it worked um, but we're trying to avoid that one step if we can so the idea is to just now purge the air out of the lines by having uh, Al crank the motor over um, it shouldn't start because you're not have you don't have enough fuel pressure but you're using the fuel pressure to purge the air out of the lines and then you do that in two basically two stages um, one and four you purge out first although you're looking at for air out of all of them and then basically solid quote unquote fuel after that so basically I wait until I've got solid fuel out of one and four and I tighten these down and then we continue to crank over two and three because these are the two lines that have uh, the last bit of air in the in the system basically and then we continue purging these out till we get solid fuel again and then we tighten these down and then hopefully at that point it should crank over um, of course we're going to put our glow plug harness back on uh, before we do that just to ensure uh, the starting um, but other than that we're pretty much almost there so we're gonna Al's gonna get in the car and we're gonna go ahead and crank this over and one thing you want to do is maybe have some safety glasses on because sometimes this fuel comes spurting out of there and you don't want to catch that in the eye. It's not fun. Uh, anyway, I'll go ahead and give it uh, three good cranks over first. All right, here we go. And we're going to be watching for air and, and fuel out of all these fittings here. Are you ready? Yep, go ahead. Go ahead, keep going. 
Okay, saw some fuel and some air. Go ahead, do it again. Okay, go ahead and do it, do it again. Okay, stop. So if right now, I'm getting pretty much solid fuel out of, actually most of them, but we're gonna continue to bleed out two and three. For right now, we're just going to tighten up. Let's go ahead and do that by hand, because it should be loose enough, and then we'll tighten up four. And it's just, again, it's just snug. That's it, don't wanna go too tight. And then we'll go number one. And you also wanna clean up the residual fuel off the engine too, especially off rubber parts like uh, coolant hoses and whatnot, because it's okay for a couple minutes, but the petrol obviously will soften the rubber. Okay, now that one's tight. It'll soften the rubber and it'll just eat a hole basically, uh, create a weak spot in your coolant hoses. And that's one one hose you definitely don't want to create a wet spot in or a, a, a uh, weak spot, excuse me. All right, clean up a little bit of that. Okay, now we're gonna watch two and three. And these are still loose. A little bit. Okay. Al, go ahead, buddy. Stop. Stop. Okay, that actually gone. started. It doesn't <laughs> normally do that. Uh, but we got lucky, so we know it's going to start. So now we don't even have to bleed it over anymore. <laughs> that was actually quite easy. Uh, just funny. You got me, Al. You got me. You got me. <laughs> that was awesome. This could not have worked out any perf perfecter. There. Let's get that one tightened down. <laughs> this one. That was awesome. I'm like, off! <laughs> off, 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 hurry! All okay. right, now we got diesel over everything. Yeah. So now we now like, we're gonna, if you wanna. Um, I'll stop right now. I'll yeah. Get it ready. We're gonna go ahead and do a little quick clean up here, and then we'll be right back with you in just a minute. Okay. Help me. And now we've got the lines all tightened down because <laughs> we almost caught a face full of fuel. This is again why we wear safety glasses or some sort of eye protection, kids. Uh, gave it a good wipe down, and we got the, don't forget your glow plug harness. You, it should start anyway, but you'll get a check engine light if you don't plug them back in. So, uh, we just make sure everything's in, done, tight, 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 everything's on, and ow, fire. That's a running TDI engine, kids. That's a beautiful thing. What's that noise? There we go. It's not taking. It's not loping. Oh no. These are these are beautiful, dude. Love it. And you, you want to make sure that none of your fittings are leaking. Uh, so we're we're nice and good. We're, we're you also want to make sure you don't have anything bubbling up from each injector seat either. Mm -hmm. So you give a real quick look at your flashlight. And it runs nice and smooth. That's very smooth. Now we're just going to let it warm up and make sure we're not smoking excessively. And then later on we'll do another piece where we go in and dial them all in with BCDS because there are specific parameters to set up different no size nozzles and styles of nozzles to make them run optimally for power, mileage, and minimal to no smoke. Especially if you're like me and Al and we live in California, we have smoke, we're gonna get pulled over. So we like to keep that to a, a, almost a zero minimum if we can. But she sounds good, she sounds real good. All right, everyone. Hope you guys enjoyed that video here at Pinch Al's Garage. Cause I know I did. I definitely learned a thing or two with uh, working on an ALH with Chris. Now that guy is Chris from Kerma TDI. Awesome dude, definitely knows his TDI motors very, very well. And one thing I'm going to tell you guys, to keep these videos coming, head on over to my uh, online store at pinchalsgarage.com, buy some legit merch, anything you guys want. I also make custom merchandise for you guys. All that comes towards the channel and helps us keep doing what we're doing. So if you guys enjoyed that, please hit that like and that subscribe button and share it all with all your friends and family because this has been Chow's Garage and this is what we do. We break, fix, and repeat. So peace out everyone.